Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here, of course, and I want to thank uh, uh, you for the invitation to be here and to talk a bit about what it is that we're doing and why we're doing it and how we're doing it. Basically, we believe that everybody, every person should have equal chances in life. And uh, what we do is when we see people in need, we need to help them, we want to help them. That's it, pure and simple. So first of all, a bit about me. Yeah, that is me, the one, both, both, yeah. I've come a long way, or haven't I? Um, on a tender age of 18 years old, I traveled overland to India, and um, many other trips to developing countries followed after that. And I always wanted to do something about the poverty that uh, I wished, witnessed in uh, quite a few countries. We exist, PCF exists, to find help and empower people in need. What we do is important, of course, but I want to start with how we do it, because I think that that is what makes us stand out. We believe that if you want to help someone, the first thing that you have to do is to shut up and listen. People in the communities know best what it is that uh, they need, not we. We are the outsiders. Listen to the people who can tell you what the problems are, how they think that problems can be solved. So a project initiated and owned by the community has a much better chance to succeed than something that comes from outside. It's the difference between a top-down and a bottom-up approach. And we are very much from the bottom-up approach. So we partner. We partner with local organizations. They know the problems. They speak the language. They know the culture. And they are the ideal partners for us to implement the projects that they know will work. But very often, they lack the resources to find help uh, from outside. And that is where we come in. Basically, what we're doing is we provide missing, missing stepping stones that take people from poverty to opportunities. Our approach is that we're being very flexible. We listen to the communities what it is that they need. Would we be an organization, for instance, that only builds schools? And we get into a, a village and we see, hey, there is a school already. Okay, uh, we could try and find out if the education that is given in this, in this school is any good. If it's good, and we only build schools, we leave the village and we do not take the opportunity to sit down with the community and ask them what it is that they need, what their problems are. It could be adequate sanitation or clean water or food security, safe shelter, etc. Poverty has many faces and we do not focus on one aspect of poverty. We lay down exactly that missing stepping stone that allows uh, people and communities to get across from poverty to opportunities. Another very important principle for us is that we try to find hidden projects. We find them. Why is that so important? Well, if they find us, they have the resources to find other funders as well. So are we really needed? We try to find hidden projects where NGOs are not stumbling over each other to help the, the community. This is a uh, project in Kachin State in Burma. In 10 schools, seven of those in IDP camps, uh, children do get an education. Now, it's not making things easy for us because, hey, you can't go there, uh, you can't see it with your own eyes. But what is the alternative for the children who now get an education in a conflict area like that? It's very likely that they would get in touch with either drugs or alcohol, uh, that they would be recruited by armed forces, uh, armed groups, that they would be exploited and later in life would not get uh, uh, well-paid jobs. So it might not be a sexy uh, project, we might not go there, but it's very important and it's exactly what I said, a hidden project, nobody else is giving help there. Okay, we work in three different countries. Burma, Thailand, Cambodia. 22, 22 projects at the moment. By now, we have a lot of experience. Over the nine years, 
uh, that we exist, we have um, supported over 100 projects. And many of those projects are ongoing projects. Everything that we do is well documented. You can see what it is that we've been doing. And it's verifiable what uh, the results are. So the birth of a project. Project support starts with initial introductions and with a communication, with, with, with a meeting. We start with a preliminary due diligence process. Ten questions, ten easy questions to find out if this project uh, has potential to be um, vetted by us. Putting the theory into practice. So in the next six slides, I'm going to take you through that very thorough due diligence process. What is it that we do? Okay, I see very scared faces here now. <laughs> I am not going to do that. This is just to show that we are taking our work absolutely very serious. We, we have a lot in place to make sure that indeed we can uh, be certain that it is needed, that it meets our criteria, and the, uh, our sponsors can rest assured that if we make the decision to support a project and we ask for the money, that it will be something that uh, will have good results. Once a project has gone through the due diligence process, this is what we receive from our uh, partner, from the project. A very detailed activity plan. What is it that they are doing uh, during their uh, project, project year and uh, together with uh, the expected results. We sign an MOU with them, uh, with the requirements and responsibilities from both partners. We ask for a budget, a very detailed budget that will give us an insight what the money will be spent on. Um, we agree on a reporting schedule. We want to know what they are doing over the, over the year. And we uh, have this reporting schedule agreed with them. Then a payment schedule, um, installments, and we need to receive payment requests as well. And then there is a final proposal, of course. The real outcome is this. These are the children that we work for. Children, in the case of MDDD, at-risk children who um, can go to school. They can dream again. They have hopes of a better future. They are taken care of and they receive a normal education. They are allowed to be a child. You could say it ends there. Yeah? Project implemented, that's it then. But that is not where it ends for us. Um, we remain in contact, the projects and the sponsors, and both are extremely important. The uh, projects, because we want to know that everything is continuing and going as, as we planned. We want them to know that their continued support, our continued support for them, is dependent on their performance. For the sponsors, we find it extremely important also that they stay informed on how their support helps these target groups. They thoroughly appreciate the communication that we have with them, the transparency that we show, and the attention for them. So there's also the ongoing communication, not only with our sponsors, but with everybody who wants to know what we are doing. And we're using uh, social media for that, the website, annual reports, four newsletters per year. So we keep everybody in, in, informed. It's about transparency and uh, we invest in that. We take a lot of uh, time and energy to keep our audience informed. And then, Finally, there's the interim and the final reports for our sponsors. Those are the most detailed uh, documents that we uh, give to our sponsors to see what it is that we're doing. And they have a financial report as well. We communicate about everything with our sponsors. And if, for instance, there is a balance, uh, we talk with our sponsors, we discuss with our sponsors how we are going to use that balance. And in most cases, we can use it for the next project here. This is why we're doing it. The children, their parents and caretakers, uh, the communities are the reasons why we do what we're doing.
to give them better opportunities than what their circumstances would normally allow them to have. If we succeed in that, giving them better opportunities in life, then our mission is accomplished.